After winning fans in the West End and on the big screen as Eponine in the Les Mis movie, Samantha Barks is making a splash this season, starring in Pretty Woman, the musical. The stage adaptation of the 1990 rom-com, starring Julia Roberts and Richard Gere, marks the Big Voice Brit's Broadway debut. Watch her discuss adding her own flair to the iconic role of working girl Vivian Ward, what happened when Julia Roberts stopped by the Nederlander Theater, her diva dog Ivy, and more on this week's Show People. Sam Barks. Sam or Samantha? Um, Samantha, but I'll take both. Samantha, yeah. yeah, okay. I don't know, I feel like a Samantha today. I'm so happy you're here. I'm such a big fan of yours. Oh, thank you. I wanted to have you here for a long time, so I'm glad you're finally on Broadway. People were itching for you to get to Broadway. Yeah, do you know what? I, I was, I've always, obviously, always wanted to be on Broadway. It's like such a dream. Um, and there've been a few situations uh, in my life where I was gonna go to Broadway, yeah. maybe gonna go to Broadway, and then it was, the minute this happened, it was like, oh, get me there. I just, I was so excited. The minute I found out they were doing this, this is a musical, I was like, get me so, in. So I know little girls all around America have dreams of Broadway. So do little girls yeah. in the Isle of Man and in England. Do you know what? Yeah, absolutely. I think for me, when I grew up on the Isle of Man, it's sort of, you dream of being on Broadway, but it's almost like a dream you would never say out loud. Because you're like, mm -hmm. how? How on earth do I get to that stage? But it's so interesting. I was saying, like, I... I've watched this show so many times and, and I love that. Yeah, oh my I love god. That you're absolutely. A viewer. Absolutely. And like when I was growing up, I when I did Les Mis, it was really interesting because these movie musicals, they are they really impact people's lives. That's what I grew up watching. Yeah. Like Chicago and yeah. things like that and hairspray. And it it was such a way of getting to see that little slice of Broadway. So to actually be here is like yeah. surreal. Yeah. Okay, well, let's surreal. talk about Pretty Woman because I don't know if you knew, but you're in Pretty Woman. You yes. are the Pretty Woman. Well, Trying to be. I mean, that, that's a lot to live up to. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah. Not only are you Pretty Woman in Pretty Woman, and you know, there's billboards, your your photo next to that, and mm. you know, you promote the show, you're Pretty Woman, but also you have an entire Broadway company singing "You're Beautiful" <laughs> yeah. to your face every night. <laughs> yeah. There's a, there's a lot of a lot of uh, positive energy being thrown at you. How does that feel? It's a good boost, you know. If someone's sure. saying you're beautiful, you're like, well, I'll, I'll take it for a second, but. Do you know what's amazing about it? The show is, it, it's the most fun I've ever had. Like, it, honestly, being with that group of people every mm -hmm. night is just amazing. Whether they're saying I'm beautiful or not, they're the mm -hmm. best. They mm -hmm. are such a great, um, such a great cast. Like, I genuinely, like, I'm giddy to go to work every night. It's great. Yeah. I'm happy to hear that. Yeah. Well, Gary Mitchell, your director, choreographer, <laughs> he's very good at that. I feel like he's very good at yeah. creating big families. Broadway families um, and groups of people that like to have fun together yeah. and keeps the, the play and the full out. The full out! Keep all that really yeah. alive, well, right? He is so full of energy and life. Yeah. And and really that trickles down. You know, he's he's so fun and enthusiastic in that room. Mm -hmm. and, um, and, and that's amazing, you know, because obviously being a director, there's so many things constantly being thrown at you, especially when you're a tech process, but he's mm -hmm. really upbeat and it's kind of amazing to have that energy in the room because that he's he's our captain, you know? Mm -hmm. And so it, it really has a knock-on effect. It's so crazy. Years ago, um, randomly, I met with Jerry in the Covent Garden Hotel for a cup of tea. Nice. And just completely randomly, like, would you like to sort of meet up with Jerry Mitchell? I was like, absolutely. I'm a huge fan of his, mm -hmm. a huge fan of all of his work. And I was like, yeah, so that was that. And then years later, I, it came up, popped up on Twitter. They said they're doing pretty well on the musical. I was like, oh my God, oh my God. <laughs> and then I saw Jerry Mitchell's doing it. I was like, that is such a great combination. And I was just, yeah, I instantly was on the phone to my agent. I was like, they're doing pretty well on the musical. And, um, and it actually worked out in a really weird way because I was doing a film in London at the time mm -hmm. when they were auditioning, but I happened to have a week off to come here and I was doing some concerts. Okay. So they were like, oh, it randomly fell that the wow. auditions were on this week because otherwise I wouldn't have been able to get out. Mm. So I came here, auditioned, and that was it. Landed it. And, and it was, yeah, and so then I, but then I flew home the next, like the next day when they had the callbacks and they were like, right, can she come to the call? They were like, no, I can't, I'm gone. They were like, oh, okay. And then it was like, maybe I'll have to fly back. And then it was like, the next day I just got the job and it was, uh, I, I was so happy. Just, it's just a role I was desperate 
to get my hands on, just to like get stuck into, and it's oh. Why? So Why fun. Vivian? Why this role? Why because this show? Well, Pretty Woman, the film, I think. Which came out the same year you were born, by the way. The same year I was born. Yes. Just growing up, I loved, I loved Pretty Woman. I loved her character, um, because she's so, she's so much fun, and she's mm -hmm. such an amazing female character to watch, and um, and just what I always just loved about it was seeing. Of course, I loved Richard Gere. I loved him in, sure. in the film. We all did, but just seeing, you know, all of his like, just, just the way he lived his life and to see how much she completely changes uh -huh. everything, everything he thought he knew about about life and just seeing how that, that presence of her affected him in such a positive way. And I just, I, I loved her. Mm -hmm. I loved, I, I loved everything about her. I loved Julia Roberts, of course. And yeah, and I just saw it, I was like, that would be so fun as mm -hmm. a musical, um, especially with Jerry. It's just, mm -hmm. yeah. And she's sort of a classic underdog character. Absolutely, that's the thing. And people see her as, one thing and she ends mm -hmm. up being something completely different and the same is true about when people sometimes think of pretty woman they're like oh oh she just you know she's a prostitute she gets a makeover and that's it and it's like n not at all mm -hmm. and that's never what i took away from it it's mm. it's really not about her transformation it's about his mm -hmm. and it seems on the outskirts it's like oh she gets the, the the makeover and the hair and that's like whatever it's what she does to him and 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 you know they they both sort of needs saving in very different ways. Mm -hmm. But really, she saves him. Mm -hmm. That's what it's about. Do you feel like an underdog in your career at all? Because you've, you've had a very great career. Yeah. I, I mean, it looks like, you know, you've had a lot of great successes and... Yeah, for sure, I think. Um, look, when I, when, I got, when I got offered Eponine in the movie, that, yeah. was, that was a shocker. Mm -hmm. That was a shocker, I think, to everybody. Because no one knew who I was, so... Yeah, hundred percent an underdog because I was, I I was so lucky to just get that one audition. Mm -hmm. I was I was just so excited to get it, but I was, and Tom Hooper was there, and right. I auditioned, and I was like, well, I got to see Tom Hooper, and that's the last I'll ever hear from it. And then I kept coming back and coming back, and it was like over fifteen weeks that I was in and out, in and out, and then all of a sudden I'd find out somebody was announced to be playing it, and I was like, how? Because I'm auditioning tomorrow, and then they'd be like, oh, it's against you and this person, or you and this person, or you right. and this person. And it was like, people who I just admire and think are incredible, and yeah, to get offered it. I was, I, on, Underdog doesn't even cover what I was in mm -hmm. that situation, yeah, massively. Uh, we're gonna talk <laughs> about that and more after this break. are back with Samantha Barks, who is fantastic and pretty woman oh, at the Nederlander you. Theater. Yeah. By the way, you were just got to, I mean, Andy Carl is your, your normal Edward, but you also oh. did it with Adam Pascal. Yes. Nederlander legend. Nederlander this, theater legend. No, this was my like Mimi dream. <laughs> like, Mimi, yeah. Honestly, I was like, yeah. I was pretending I was Mimi for a second. Sure. He's just the nicest guy. Yeah. He was so lovely. And it's like, it's Roger. It was insane. It mm -hmm. was, you know, I grew up obsessed with Ren and it was just, it, yeah, it was so fun. Yeah. So do you keep your cool around, I mean, when, when you meet people like that, because I also want to talk, yeah. we're trying to talk about Les Miserables, and I know that uh, Hugh Jackman came to the yeah. show, Russell Crowe came yeah. to the show. You have Les Mis fancy friends from Les <laughs> yeah. Mis. Look at that. They're just <laughs> your co-stars. They're not, you know, you guys were both, you were all fantastic in the movie together. Oh. And in fact, like nominated and, you know, up for awards and winning awards as an ensemble. Yeah. So uh, that, that's exciting. So are you are you oh, yeah. good with meeting famous people? What was it like when you got on the set of Les Mis? Well, oh, the f the first rehearsal that we were there was everyone. It was crazy. It was Hugh and Anne and Eddie and Amanda. All first we name basis. Just, I love yeah, that. Yeah, <laughs> you know their last names. <laughs> yeah, and and it it's was amazing. surreal. Do you know what? I think it was maybe awful. I had this terrible toothache, and the night before, I was like, oh god. Oh God, not tonight, please. I've got, I've got the biggest day of my life tomorrow. I ended up having an emergency root canal in the middle of the day. What? Yeah. I was like, no guys, I am in so much pain. In, I was like, I'll just be gone in the lunch break. And I had a, an actual emergency root canal. You're like, please don't replace me. Please don't replace yeah, me. Please, please don't, don't replace don't me. me. <laughs> it wasn't the first day, but it was really early on. And I went and they were like, no, we've got to get this out right now. And they did half of it. And I came back and I was like, I'm fine. I can carry on. But my whole face couldn't move. <laughs> I was like, 
and he never saw me. <laughs> so uh, in some of the movie, are we actually looking at you in pain for any of, the, of <laughs> no. that movie? No, that was the rehearsal, okay, thank rehearsal. God, but it's not the best first impression. But <laughs> luckily, they were, they were all so loving that. I was thinking, I, I just, I guess I'd never met, I'd never met people like that on that level. But what was amazing about Les Mis was there wasn't anybody there who knew what we were doing. This is a mm. live musical. Mm -hmm. In this capacity, the first time it had happened, Hugh Jackman, who was a big movie star and a big musical star, even him, he was like, let's try right. this. Let's go right. for this. And, you know, there's people who've done thousands, they've all done thousands of movies combined. And then, you know, some have done musicals, but it was like all of us together. It was, it was kind of amazing. They'd be asking me questions like, okay, in the show, and they'd be asking, they'd be nervous. And I'd be thinking, if you... If you're nervous, then where does that leave me? <laughs> you're a star, you're amazing. But it was an, actually an amazing leveler. We were all kind of giddy, but uh -huh. not sure what we were doing. And, and that was exciting because it, we it bonded us. But to be fair, you may have been the most prepared because you were singing on my own live every night in the West yeah, End. But it's very different the way they wanted it, the way mm -hmm. he wanted the film. It wasn't, I, uh, and I, I was used to singing it because I like, so you had I to, want like, to sing. Under sing it? A 100%. Little? Yeah, yeah. And he wanted it very spoken mm -hmm. almost. So if you ever started to like, he'd be like, no, <laughs> you're like, tame it, tame it. I'm like, okay, stop okay, being okay, a good stop. singer. <laughs> and it is, your, it, it's, he wants, he wanted it to be spoken yeah. pretty much, which is learning a whole different way because you're like, oh God, sometimes you, you have to almost, and I always just say, you have to leave your vocal vanity at the door because it just wouldn't fit in. Mm. All of a sudden, you come out, ha, and it's like, <laughs> no, 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 you, you've, you've been shot and you're in Eddie Redmayne's arms. It's, it, it was a different style. Uh -huh. And so I'm just, I feel lucky to have got to do it on stage and the film yeah. because they're two very different yeah. um, beasts. Your director, Tom Hooper, isn't he making a, a, a crazy cats movie right yes. now? Did you, did you say like, I want to be a cat? I want to be, I want to be one of your kitty cats. I'd love to be a cat, but I'm, you know, I'm Vivian Ward. I'm on being Broadway. a hooker, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Broadway, Broadway's a, a nice gig. Yeah, I can't wait to see it though. It's gonna be so exciting. I'm dying to see what it is. I, I know. Mean, especially when you talk about how he did Les Mis in such a unique way. Exactly, because I think when we all think of cats, it's like I think of the dancing. You know? Yeah, yeah. And that's another reason why maybe I'm not a kitty cat. It's like <laughs> oh, but I can't wait to see all that. You know, it's gonna be, it's not, it's gonna be so different from. The musical, I'm sure, because, yeah. but it's going to be great. I can't yeah. wait. You know, I love, yeah. like I said, I love movie musicals. I love seeing the interpretation and, you know. Let's fun. talk about, uh, speaking of meeting famous people, Julia Roberts did <gasps> come to the theater <sighs> and ha you had a moment. I believe you didn't know she no, was there? I did not know. I remember actually hearing, I heard a couple days before, I remember people saying, like, we can't tell Sam. Yeah, no, I said, don't tell me. <laughs> Do not tell me. And I, I meant just like anyone, because I think when you're in that process and you're like opening a show and, it's like, what good is that going to do me? Telling me who, it, the, yeah, the it pressure is previous, high right. enough, it, you know. Right. Yeah, and then so I was like, but I didn't even know they were talking about Julia Roberts. I just thought it meant like any, anyone, but I was like, and they announced it at the end and I was stood there like, thank God I didn't know. Because mm. I just, oh, mm -hmm. she's just, and she's so beautiful. So tell me, t tell me everything about the moment. What did she say to you? What was it like well, having that FaceTime with her? I've seen the photos. Yeah, she, she walked on, she just went <gasps> and just hugged me and we just like stayed in a hug. And I was like, is this real life? Is this actually <laughs> happening? And just such a warm person. She was just, she was so kind to, mm -hmm. to, to me about what I'd done in the role. And that was like, to have her blessing was like, dream, <laughs> dream mm -hmm. come true. It's, you know, you can't ask for more. It's, it's, she created this incredible character. Mm -hmm. She is magic. They are magic together, you mm -hmm. know? And, um, and of course it's a huge challenge to even get to be in those shoes for a second, but to just, it was an, it was a surreal moment. I just imagine that, she, you know, you meet someone like Judy Roberts, she'd be like, hi, great show or whatever. But she was so warm and, and yeah, it was it was it was really a dream come true. It, it was amazing. The show does recreate a lot of things from the movie. Yeah, and, and I think audiences love that. The minute I found out I was going to play this role, I was like, Bleh! almost pretty one's banned. I yeah. can't watch it because you can't watch it. It's such right. an iconic, right. beautiful performance and such an amazing yeah. show that you're like, right, as much as you can. It's not about like, you know, trying to be different for different sake. It's not yeah. about like, but it's about doing your own thing with it whilst yeah. honoring 
the amazing character that's yeah. already been created. So there's a pressure there for sure to You're like delivering the moments, and that's why people are eating it up. Oh, I mean, thank you. I mean, the people come to that show ready for the, for. They love that movie as much as you did, yeah. and they want this to be a musical. And they're and yeah, they're, and you can fe it. you can feel sometimes they're like trying to race to finish a line if you're yeah. saying those lines from the, it's it's a yeah. really nice atmosphere. Yeah, nostalgic and mm -hmm. yeah. Awesome. Okay, we'll be back with more Samantha Barks. Back with Samantha Barks. She's a pretty woman. You're the pretty woman. Oh, thanks. Do you want to just play like a really like ugly woman next? Like, do you want to just go dark? Well, do you know, and yeah, but you know what? After playing like Eponine and Nancy and all that, I'm always I'm always covered in dirt. So I was like, oh, I'm You're gonna like, wear a fresh, red lip. Very LA. <laughs> yeah. The LA moment. I love it. <laughs> so you've already done the dark. Yeah, yeah, You're yeah. Very comfortable. Yeah, no makeup, mud. You know, so like this is my time to wear a lash. Mm. You know, it's time. I'm in. Time I'm in. For, yeah, it's time. Yeah. Uh, what was your first like role? Like your the first thing you ever did? Sally Bowles. Oh, in cabaret. Really? I was a young Sally Bowles, maybe the youngest, uh, on the the UK tour. Right. So that but that was after. I mean, so, so you grew up in Isle of Man, as we mentioned, which is a place no one really knows what that is. It just sounds like a fake it's like Disney best. place or something. Oh, it's like it's like it could be in Disney. It but really it's could. So sweet. I love it. I love it. They should make an animated movie about young Sam Barks on the Isle of Man. That'd be fun. That would be my what would she dream. Be, what would she What would she be doing? What were you like as a little girl? Um, I've well seen was, pictures. You were very cute. Oh my god, I, I'm like chubby. Oh no, I'm like <laughs> so chubby. I love a chubby little girl. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was always I was always singing, you know. And again, it was never came from a point of view. I'm going to be a singer. It was just my absolute. None of my family sing, so all of a sudden they had this like. I'm the I'm the youngest of three. This little person running around just bursting in song all the time but my brother my poor brother he's who I adore is a pilot and so at the time he was he just started being a pilot oh wow so he's up at like three in the morning at one at one in the morning my parents god love them bought me a karaoke machine and I'd put on <laughs> you know instrumental tracks <laughs> and I'd be like and I'd be doing full on what were you singing like I was saying this the other day I the movie in my mind I remember thinking because I didn't know what it was about because I was really young and I was like well, ironically, it's about prostitutes. I know. And now you're time, Vivian, a pretty like, woman. You were this training. This is about like the horrible boys in my school, and they're just not <laughs> that. <laughs> the movie plays, and I was like, I was in, or I dreamed a dream, not knowing what it's about. Yeah. Just like this really relates to my life. You know? I love it. Full, full blast. And my brother, I remember knocking, going, "Will you just <laughs> stop?" Seeing he was up in like an hour to fly a plane. It was like, yeah. So that was me. Wow, in and dancing. Shot. Dancing, I love dancing, ballet, uh -huh. tap, modern, mm -hmm. playing the drums, singing choirs, anything I could get my hands on. Just it was, and my parents just saw that that was when I was the happiest version of me. Wow. Just loved it. Loved wow. every part of it, yeah. Wow. And then you, you made like a pop album, right? I and did. Like when you were no, really I was, young? I, I never knew what I wanted to be. I didn't know if I wanted to be a pop singer or an actress or yeah. a music theater singer. I, d I, didn't, I didn't know I was ever gonna have the option to so it was just like a fun thing I did an album on the Isle of Man which was it was it was an album that, that was small and only sold on the Isle of Man but like it was so much fun and, and all these things it just led to the point where I was like oh I have to do this so I asked my parents when I was 16 um can I move to London they were like what <laughs> from this little um island to London it's a huge sort of jump you know the Isle of Man is such a lovely safe place to London and actually they turned around and they said yes which was the most terrifying part I was like Amazing. no I'm actually gonna go and they're not they're not the kind of parents who'd just be like oh yeah whatever but they were actually like we actually the fact that I came with almost like a business plan at 16 they were like we actually don't want to stand in the way of that and just like when I look back I'm mind blown of the support and that's and that's a lot of the things that lead you to the point that you get to I go it's really very little to do with me. It's like mm -hmm. this, the backing of your family and your parents mm -hmm. and my grandparents, my sister. It's all those people along the way mm -hmm. um, that mean you get to do what you get to do. So. How do all those people feel about you uh, being a Broadway star now and oh. being in New York? And That's amazing. They're, they've all been to see me. My, my, my parents, this might be like their fifth time. Uh -huh. They keep saying, this is the last time. And they were like, we won't come again because Christmas, you know. And then they're like, we're coming in March. And it's so nice because it's just getting to 
get into beer because it's it's that's when I do my tourist stuff. Is mm -hmm. when I go with my family and and you yeah. know see the yeah. sights. Are you enjoying New York? I am. I have loved it. I really have because I thought, will I be homesick or? There's just so much going on. Mm -hmm. There's so much going on and there's so many great things to do and the people, like I'm, I, my cast and my mm -hmm. family here. And so, mm -hmm. yeah, I've loved it. I have loved it and I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna miss it. So I wanna make the most of it, but I also am excited to, to see everyone in London. You'll be back, you Yay! better be. Oh, I hope so. Uh, how's that little Ivy, that, that adorable dog of yours? Oh my God. She is the real star of the show. And I'm surprised she's not here already. Yeah, well, so you could have brought her. Was she, was she, I mean, it's a very dog-friendly cast, first yes. of all. Orphe and Andy are like dog ambassadors. Absolutely. Um, and, and she's there all the time. Every, all the time. Let me tell you, she's there when I'm not there. So, yeah, I went on holiday for a week. She just and grabs a dad, taxi and yeah, goes to the well, theater. Basically, and Orfe was like, she can still come. And I was like, that would actually be amazing. So, like, we had people in the cast going, wait. Is that Ivy? And Sam's not even Sounds here. Sounds like a daycare place was, for you. You can just drop her off when just, you have other things. Well, she's, she's like, I have a track in the show. And people, you know, she's like, I need to be there because she's like basically the mascot for the building. <laughs> and it's like, I, sometimes Ivy has this like social life that I have nothing to do with. The other day I was like, what is her toy doing there? Somehow she'd managed to get Mo, who <laughs> is one of the dresses, to like fix her toys, give them a wash. And I'm like, <laughs> all this stuff happens like without me knowing. And I turn around, and I'm like, all right. And Ivy's like, oh, hi, mom, you're all right, are you busy? I'm like, y yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, she's the light of my life, honestly. Oh, oh. the sweetest. Have you I always been a dog person? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I just, I, my family have always had dogs and I love them so much, it's uncontrollable. Yeah. That's most of me and Orfe's day. We just send each other videos. Just dogs. I can't deal with it. There was a video yesterday of like a little, I guess it was like a husky or something, it was this big. And he was so scared of the vets that he just did this and took himself <laughs> off like to a desert <laughs> island. But why is a dog doing that? Like why is he like meditating? That's what makes me laugh. They're just like, she has her own little personality. I just love dogs. They're, they are They are just, they're just such pure souls. So you, you checked off the Broadway thing. Yeah. Uh, you'll be back though, you better be. Yeah. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna be after you if you don't. <laughs> yeah. uh, what, what, are, what are your goals? Like what do you, if you sort of look ahead, like what do you wanna do? I, I, don't, I don't know, I really don't know. And I think that's sort of the way I've always been. Uh -huh. um, but I'm kind of, for me it's always been about like roles. So whether mm -hmm. that's in yeah. film or in, in musicals or or whatever it is, I just think, yeah, I just sort of wait to, to see what's next and then sort of go with the flow a little bit. I'm not, I've never been someone who's like, I must do this and I want to do this by this age and this. I've never been that, that kind of person. I've always been a little bit, I'm quite sort of laid back. But then when, when opportunities do come, it's, I'm, I love, I just, I love, I love working and I love, I love where it's taken me. To get mm -hmm. to just live in New York has been a, Surreal, amazing. Mm -hmm. I can't, I can't imagine that I live here really, um, and that's when my parents do come. It's like, wow, I'm doing this. It's a real nice moment of going, wow. Like, look, how I'm did in Times this Square. happen? Like, I'm in it's Times a Square. Thing. That's the biggest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> it's, it's huge. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. Well, I'm so thrilled for you. I'm, oh, you know, I've been a you. fan for years, and I've, I've been waiting for you to come to Broadway and. I saw you at City of Angels in yes. London, and I oh. and you're, you're so fantastic. And Thank I can't, you so much. Can't wait to see what's next. And I love I love hearing your voice on that cast album. Oh, I love you for saying that. It's Thank so you. So good. And uh, so more Broadway, please. Yes, please. And oh, everyone. for sure. Like I, I'd love in a heartbeat. I'd love to come back. I've loved. I've fallen in love with the city. Thank you so much for being <laughs> here. Oh, thank Great you for having you. me. Hey, everyone, go see Pretty Woman at the Nederlander Theater. This is Samantha Barks. She's fantastic. Thanks yeah. again. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.